Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu has been lauded globally for his continued fight against social injustice and his support for human rights. President Cyril Ramaphosa says he was a man of unwavering courage and principled conviction whose life was spent in the service of others. Tell us more about Archbishop Desmond Tutu's role in the fight for the freedom of this country. Let's bring in former UDF uh, activist Mkuseli Jack, who's now a businessman as well, who joins us via our video link from the Eastern Cape this morning. Uh, but Mkuseli, it's great to see you and thank you so much for making time to share your sentiments with us this morning. There's been so much said about this man who's touched so many lives and uh, I get a sense that he's also had a personal impact on yours. Get us a sense of how you're feeling this morning. Yeah, it is a, yes, it's a great uh, uh, loss uh, in the sense that uh, although uh, he has been uh, less active in recent days, uh, we his presence in the country and amongst us was always a pointer to uh, social justice. And uh, I think that uh, losing him in this country at this moment, it is uh, definitely a great uh, loss and uh, a setback to our nation that needs uh, crusaders of his caliber as we are trying to uh, to get out of, uh, pull ourselves out of the current political uh, position we find ourselves in, in many ways. Right. Many people saying he is the last greats of our time. And that obviously, whilst, you know, it is um, covered in homage, it also is a cause for concern because the real question now becomes, how do we fill that void given how much work still needs to be done in our country? Look, I mean, he set the tone, he set the pace, and uh, uh, it's just that it's a pity as South Africans, we remember these things on the day of the passing of an individual, mm. and yet, when he was amongst us, he warned us sufficiently and loud enough for not a single one of us to miss his, uh, uh, his uh, pointing the direction, and uh, we didn't seize that. But one hopes that his departure will make us really move back to the path that we were supposed to be uh, traversing in the first place. Yeah. A great point of, call it, sobering reflection around his life is around his role in the TRC and what emerged from the TRC itself. What's your response to individuals who believe that the work that was done there wasn't enough, and it is work that still needs to continue. Look, Bishop Tutu and he and the team of other commissioners did what they were told to do in terms of the law of the country, which was speculated as to what he must do. And uh, of course, some people uh, tried to uh, belittle the work and others try to pretend to be uh, militant and so on, and talking about the need to a war to the finish, when actually there was no need for that. Mm. And, um, and I believe that uh, the, the, the ball is not in the court of the, of the commission. It is on the people, the actors, that were supposed to go to the Truth Commission and put their story uh, on both sides, by the way. And um, as far as I'm concerned, he did the job in an excellent way. Of course, so some people didn't go. Some people started to have their own uh, uh, plans for the Truth Commission, which were not what was intended. So that's not the fault of the bishop. Look, Bishop Tutu did not start with the Truth and Reconciliation. This great South African, I mean, he has... Uh, 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 been a crusader of social justice in this country uh, uh, for decades. And therefore, uh, he, he, up to the last minute, he has always stood for the justice that he fought for, and he wanted to see it being done. And the fact that we didn't do it, it's not his fault, it's our fault in every respect of our lives. So I'm trying to say Bishop Tutu is a great man. I mean, as you know, he, his sense of justice is just unparalleled. The man was born in the 
in, in the racist field where the port of Claxdorf, those towns of uh, the Western Transvaal in those days. And uh, he carried that to uh, that in him to fight for uh, 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 the respect of humanity because he saw the dehumanization and social degradation of our people in those areas. And he made it his job from day one to fight and see to it that people are treated as equals. So the same thing, he was his ambition, he was the correct person to be chosen to lead the Truth Commission because it was in him, it wasn't something that he was faking. Tutu was a person of reconciliation that wanted every South African to live in harmony and if you remember well also, he's the very person who coined the word, the thing about uh, the rainbow nation. Though the younger generation today, they make a joke about it, but we shouldn't. We should educate them and tell them that this is Tutu from day one who wanted to see that South Africa is a land of all. Yeah, yeah. You speak about young people and how they should remember this moment. Uh, a lot of people, of course, think to their youth when they try to place the contribution that Tutu made. In fact, Barack Obama, who you and I know is the first uh, black U.S. president, said Tutu was to him a mentor, amongst other things. Speak to us about how this icon played a role, especially among young activists within the UDF. Look... If you remember, in 1976, just go back to 1976, during the outbreak of the student uprisings, uh, the church at the time was, was viewed in a bad light by the youth, all right? And there were few clergymen in the country that were ready and willing to step forward and take the lead. And uh, uh, Tutu, as a, at the time, as a junior cleric, if I remember very well, he stepped forward. His stepping forward drew quite a lot of great clergy, men and women in this country. I mean, you think of um, Gojo, you think of Butelezi, you think of uh, Gubule, you think of uh, Matoloengwe in Cape Town, and many others, okay? And, uh, across the races and across every, yeah, in the country. And they followed and they took the struggle really and they moved to the front. And not only that inspired, as I say, the church and the clerics, but the young people then started to have somebody who understood them and who understood what they were for from the church. And that boasted the church at the time and the voice of the church at the time became very powerful. I don't know whether you know whether in 1981, Bishop Tutu, because of his championing the cause of our people, P.W. Bort accused him of uh, corruption, and hence he set up the Elof Commission, you know, of inquiry, which was supposed to check whether Bishop Tutu had stolen money from whoever, and it took two years. At that time, the main reason was to, to dampen the bishop, was to, to humiliate him, and was to, to, to make him not to be respected by the people, but they failed. Bishop Tutu emerged out of that. He went through that, and he came up on top of that. And he became such an influential figure in, in the politics of this country, but not only in South Africa. Bishop Tutu is influential in places far flung as Papua New Guinea, Tibet, uh, Burma, uh, uh, and all kinds of places where people, Palestine and everywhere, the people are looking up to him. His, his message and his word was a source of inspiration to many people, yeah. to young people yeah. across the globe. So it is true what a uh, uh, former president of the U.S. is saying, because he's a younger, he's part of that generation that uh, learned his politics at the time when Bishop Tutu was on the stage. Absolutely. So much still to be said around this man. Very quickly, uh, Bamkuseli, the real concern is now that the people like uh, the Emeritus uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the caliber of leadership they showed are no longer with us. These are individuals we now speak about in the past. 
Is that a sentiment you share? The fact that, you know, South Africa and producing the likes of Nelson Mandela, um, Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Dudu, Andrew Mlangeni, those individuals are now in our history books. And we can't say, really, that we have the Dudus of today around. Well, well, look, I mean, maybe let's put it this way. We are in a patch, a dip, and I think we are going to emerge from that. And I see quite a lot of young people who understand that uh, to rise to leadership is going to be true hardship and true hard work, true honesty, integrity, and all those things. And it is those young people that I think now we are going to have to, to, to put our hopes on them because I think that uh, uh, in our generation there was a terrible <laughs> mist. <laughs> misstep and uh, which was horrible unfortunately and uh, we just hope that uh, the younger people that are there are just going to step up and uh, and redirect us into the proper direction where we're supposed to be Babun Kuseli Chai, thank you so much for sharing your uh, time and sentiments with us. Really do appreciate your reflections this morning. Kuseli Chai, of course, a former UDF activist and a businessman in South Africa. Once again, thanks very much indeed.